Welcome back. You're watching Talk Oxford. I'm Eve Ahmed, and here with me are Peter Badger West of Ducklington Morris Dance, Frank Williams, musician, and qualitative researcher Peter Lovett. So, living to the age of 100, scientists say we shouldn't smoke, we should keep slim, we should have good blood pressure, good posture, low cholesterol, and work till our mid 50s at least and drink no more than four cups of coffee a day. We should also own our own home or rent an expensive property. Hmm. Quite a challenging list there. So what do you think? Would you want to be 100 anyway? What do you think, Peter? Pete Badger, should I say? <laughs> Whatever. I don't mind. Uh, would I want to live to 100? Yeah. Um, and would yes. Morris Dance help? Would Morris Dance help? Well, I think it's helped to a certain extent. It's, uh, it's my form of, well, one of my forms of exercise. Um, and along with the the physical side of dancing, um, yeah, but it's, it does, it's good it for socialising as well. It is energetic. I mean, how often mm. are you on the road, as it were? Um, well, we practice every week, dance out, certainly during the summer, most weekends, uh, sometimes during the week as well. We're yeah. actually dancing tonight at the Bell in Ducklington, if anybody would like to come along, from 8 o'clock. And that's, yeah. that's not a million miles from here, is it? No. How, in fact, it's not a million miles, it's probably less than a, less than a couple of miles. Yeah, it's a couple of miles away. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Is there um, a rivalry between the different sides? Because there are quite a lot of there Morris is, There is a friendly rivalry. Friendly rivalry, yeah. Yes, um, in much the same way as between musicians like these Between guys, musicians, well, I, I actually was 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 thinking more of the of football, but mm. some oh, right. some of that rivalry isn't isn't quite so friendly no, it as isn't. perhaps it, it should be. Um, in fact, football has sort of taken the place with the the industrial revolution um, in the late eighteen hundreds. Mm. Um, Morris dancing faded out as the world started to become more urbanised mm. yeah. and the Football Association was founded at about the, the time ah. um, within a couple of years of uh, Ducklington Morris, the old Ducklington Morris, dying away. And so then, presumably then we revived it in 1980. Presumably you're always looking for, for younger dancers then, younger. Me yes, we all, there, yes, as is inevitable, we all get older um, and eventually have to stop dancing. Um, so yes, we're always looking for new dancers and it would be very nice to have some young people come along. Yeah. Is yours a men-only side um, or mixed? By tradition, it was a male side, but in 2000, we decided to go mixed, which okay. is a bit yeah. controversial, but um, mm. it but works. It's worked, yeah. Yes, okay. and gives a very different atmosphere to yeah. the side. Mm. Mm. It's, um, it's not as. I'll second that controversy. I think it's a good move. Yeah. Yes, so. yes. Uh, there was a certain amount of competitive spirit, mm. and now, uh, since going mixed, it's just become a more social. Um, a much, much more even-tempered beast. Yeah. Were, were the, were the oh, men the competitive with each other on the side? <laughs> Sorry? The men were competitive with each other yes. on the side. That's yes. Because yeah. yeah. in Man Choir, I think it's very, very supportive, which is also a group of what, 40 men. Mm. And mm. it's warm, and uh, I, I haven't noticed any, um, any competitiveness going on in there. So it's, it's very no, it's a ra it's a rather different thing. Mm. You know, Morris is very, and it, uh, especially physical, the suppose. way we we mm. dance, um, it is very physical. Mm. Yes, um, I, which can actually make yeah. it difficult for younger people coming in. Yeah, shouldn't say this, but until you achieve a certain stature, yeah. you don't have the length of stride, etc. Uh, to right. uh, yeah. You know. Frank, would you like to live to be 100, and what are your handy tips? My handy tips for living to be 100, I will tell you when I'm 100. Um, <laughs> but, um, 
I, I, well, I might do. I, I don't know. I, I think I, I want something in the lottery of, of life, in the gene lottery, because my grandmother, who I grew up with, um, lived to be 105. Wow. And she was born in um, 1895 and died in 2000. And one just yeah. before her 106th birthday, yeah. and she was compass until about 2000. As the last couple of months, she kind of started being forgetful, but up until that point, she she was great. Yeah. So, mm. if I inherited anything, yes, her, I wouldn't mind that. But now here's the caveat: I wouldn't mind living to be a hundred. Provided I'm physically fit, number yeah. one, well, reasonably fit. Mm -hmm. But, and even if I wasn't reasonably fit, if I was mentally fit, mentally okay, mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind it at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the curse of our age is, um, you know, Alzheimer's and, and, and things like this. And, um, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. the scary bit about living that long. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I'd be very happy to live to be 100. Peter, yeah. of, of that list of things that you must do, how many do you follow, <laughs> would you, would you I, estimate? I, I, I don't smoke. Yeah. Um, my posture is very good. Um, <laughs> drink less than four cups of coffee a day? No, I drink quite a lot more than four oh. cups of coffee a day. Uh, in fact, I think I break most of those rules. I, I take lots of, um, lots of sleep. I guess that's good. Yeah. I've done very little. I mean, a tiny amount of exercise. I have, to, I have to walk the dog. I mean, I don't want to exercise, but the dog walks me, so I have to go out. Yeah, but you see, the, you're talking about living to 100. I, th I think the alternative is worse. So yes, I would rather live to 100 than not. But, but e even with some dementia, some level of dementia, and I think the problem is when, when it's gone too what, far. When the look. world is just a nice sort of fuzzy haze. Of, you know, you know dem a, dementia, is one of those things, <laughs> dementia is one of those things which comes up, across people quite slowly, and it's, mm. and it's, I mean, it's very... I think that for a long time people have a fantastic quality of life, and by the time you don't have it, maybe you're not so aware anyway. So I don't, mm, I'm, yeah. not sure. mm. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. That's arguable. I it's know. It's a big deal with me being mm. being being compass. It's like yeah. you know. Um, well, music's meant to be very good for the oh, brain. Oh, that's true. Isn't it? Yes, we, are, we all do music, so that's good. Yeah. It normally, it's the mm. last thing yeah. to go um, if you are going to um, become forgetful. Then, mm. um, and all the rest. It's it's the one thing that people can still do. Yeah. yeah. But hundred and yeah, I'll go for a hundred. Yeah. Why yeah. not? That's a good innings. Yeah, but I was even reading somewhere that one day we'll all be able to well not us, but people will be able to live to hundred and twenty, but that's mm. getting a bit bit ridiculous. A bit well, they, they, they are saying, they are saying the that our mm. our grandchildren and I've got three or four now, but um, they they, uh, they are likely to be the generation that lives to mm. 120, which mm. would be uh, uh, extraordinary. I mean, if it yeah. can be done healthily, yeah, it would be that, marvellous. That, that would very much depend on um, the hardware being uh, yeah. robust enough. And I don't yeah. think our hardware is robust enough well, to, to, to last that long. Well, I, I tell you what, they'd have to be working till 100 to be able for people to live to 120. That, that's the sad <laughs> thing, isn't it? Should we well? move on no to pension. our next topic now? No. Because talking about working for that long, maybe that's something that um, politics could get involved in. Because my next question is about mm. electoral reform. Mm. Do we need it? Mm. Well, I'll give you some stats here. 1.1 <laughs> people voted for the Greens. Sorry? How many seats did one. they get? 1.1 million voted for the Greens. How one. many seats did they get? One. 3.8 million voted for UKIP. How many seats did they get? One, I think. 2.4 million voted for Lib Dem. How many, and they got 56 seats. No, Lib Dem got eight. Eight seats. Oh. Right. Scottish <laughs> National Party got 56, sorry. I don't, want, I don't want to disagree with you because you are the chair here. <laughs> the chairman's always right. This is what my researcher told me. And 37% of people voted for the Conservatives who got 52% of seats. So this is the first past the post system. Do we need proportional representation? Who wants to, to go with this? Who's got an opinion? Peter, you're looking perky. I, I do. <laughs> 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 Just call me Pinky. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I'm, I do apologise, viewers. It, it, it's unintentional. Um, yes, I, I, I think that I, I think it always used to be that the, the Liberals would 
You're <laughs> <laughs> stinky now, are you? <laughs> We're still mulling that one over. No, you mull, mull away. It, mull away. Used to, you, it used to be that the Liberals would complain and say, you know, we've got this large percentage of the votes and we just there's no chance that we'll ever get into government. And, um, mm. uh, and the first pass of the post system seemed to be reasonable at a time when, frankly, the Liberals didn't have much appeal and it was a two-horse race. I think that now that we've gone into a, a, what looks like a four or five horse race, and the vote, and maybe even more, and the votes are being distributed around very evenly, I'm sort of in favour of, of proportional representation, even if it means that you have to form a government from different uh, groups. But didn't, wasn't there a, referend, a referendum on it or a vote on it, and people voted no oh, a few years ago? I think there probably was. Yeah, there was. I think you're right. You see, how, how short term our memories are. This may be a sign of things to come. So, I'm 99 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think, Badger? Is it time that we had uh, PR? Um, I think our system of government is totally crazy. Oh, it needs oh, to change big time. All oh, right. Um, it's basically a committee system, and oh. you have to take the middle path mm. all the time. So you don't get, there's no excellence, okay, there's no worst case, but there's no excellence. So there's all you get is All you get is mediocrity mm. all the time. Oh, uh, and who, to, to the politicians. I think a benign dictatorship would be better. <laughs> I'm, I am going That's to now difficult. be a benign dictator, you yes. guys, because it's time for another break now. When we come back, we'll be talking about one of my favourite topics, which is wine. It tastes better if we're told it's expensive. Scientists scanned volunteers' brains and found that price prejudice plays a significant role in whether people think the wine is good if it costs more. So are we really that gullible? We want to hear your views too, so do get in touch with us by email at talk at thatsoxford.com and via Twitter. And that's Oxford TV, and you can like us on Facebook, and we'll see you shortly.